If you've got a pick-and-place machine of the homebrew type or a light placer or something like that, then it's likely you felt the pain of dealing with component feeds. Now, OpenPNP has great support for strip feeders, but sticking components to the work surface is annoying, messy, and doesn't scale. I'm Pat Deegan, co-founder of Psychogenic Technologies, and over time I've developed some cool ways to get by using our good friend, the cut tape. And here I'll show you how to replicate or customize the setup I've settled on. I went through a lot of experimentation trying various ways of organizing the parts. Initial attempts with 3D printed feeds that had various springy bits were brittle and crappy. What I finally settled on are sets like these, generated through a nice little OpenSCAD script. So you can decide on the number of feeds per set, their length, the depth, basically customize everything. Now the flat ones are great for 0603, 0402 and small components like that. But I'll often just use these universal ones that allow for deeper components like fat caps, SOT23s and other stuff. I have everything set up so that the PCBs and components are all in the same plane, which keeps OpenPNP happy and ensures my pixel distance calibrations are good no matter what I'm looking at. Physically interacting with the feeds comes at the cost of doing setup things, which is annoying and error prone. So if possible, I like to do it just once for each run of boards. Now in a current project, I've got a medium sized batch of prototypes to assemble. It's a good number of PCBs, and at the end of the day, we'll have gone through about 7,000 components. For example, these have 60 unique components, and 25 of these guys will require 950 100 nano caps. My current feed sets just aren't up to the task. I need some new sets, so let's walk through getting that done and setting up the table. On to the Computron. Okay, check it out. Here's a little script, uh, the OpenSCAD thing I was talking about, uh, originally based on something by R. Linder I found on the interwebs. Um, I modified it kind of heavily, uh, but in essence, basically you change these variables and it changes what you're rendering. So, uh, of course, you can change the tape width to, uh, say, 16, and there you go. It just renders it. Dip. So you can change the tape width. Uh, I'm going to leave that at 8. I'm going to change the number of strips to 12 because this is going to be for the extra long thing. Um, so let's say that I want uh, a million capacitors. I'm going to put 160 millimeters long, so 16. So that's divided by 4. Uh, each slot will give you that many uh, 0402s or divided by 2. Yeah, so 80. And the tape depth here. So if I just render this, uh, there we go. Now I've got my thing here. This here, you can see the uh, depth of this. That would be great for SOT23s or whatever, but this is not going to be the case. This is just a big fat feed set for uh, the case where I'm going to have a bunch of capacitors or resistors or something like that. So I'm not going to set this to zero. I'm going to set the tape depth to uh, 0.7. There's a little bit more tolerance, and if the cap is actually a bit fat, well, fine, it'll work if it's an 0603 or something like that. So all I have to do is render this with a quick F6. Uh, that takes a little while, uh, but once we're done, we're going to be able to export a step file and uh, get that done. While we're at it, I'm also going to make myself a couple of uh, extra feeders of the regular size here, 85 millimeters, 16, and I'm going to make them uh, universals, I guess. Let's call it two millimeter depth. And so I'll produce that. Okay, now we're in FreeCAD and I have them in hand. Here's the big fat one and here's the other one. So I'm gonna make a couple of these. Now, time to print. I don't have a 3D printer, it's a project I haven't faced yet. So instead what I do is I go to my friend TreatStock here. TreatStock is basically uh, what 3D hubs used to be. So um, you can basically print everything up. Uh, I had this guy I was kind of regular with, but uh, I think I'm going to change for someone who's a bit closer. It's neat because uh, you can actually get in touch with people who have uh, 3D printers who are close to you and uh, basically rely on them to, to handle all this stuff. So I did orange a number of times. I think I'm going to go with another color this time. The important thing is that it doesn't conflict with either black or white uh, because I want to be able to put uh, either kind of tape in there without a problem. So time to produce that. Okay, the STLs for the feeder are now gonna be produced. Uh, so uh, my Kappa guy is pretty fast, but uh, not instantaneous. In the meantime, uh, let's take a look at setting up OpenPNP. So let's do some cleanup first. I'm going to take one of my scripts here and uh, reset the feeds. So just gonna take that, reset all the parts. Yeah, I wanna set it to home. And there we go, everything is homed and uh, 
So here's my project and uh, yeah, everything is disabled. I set up the fiducials and that's all. Now it's time to use that auto setup script that I basically developed as a screencast. So to do this, I needed to make a couple of changes. Uh, first of all, here, here is basically the package description which tells you each type of package that you might encounter, what kind of uh, tape it's in and its spacing and all that. The other is the feed description. Uh, this basically says that, uh, so I've got these feeds here. Uh, if you look at the feeders, I've got, I set up my uh, MM Extra, and so that's going to be the extra long one. And I've got them basically arranged as a, a reference strip feeder, uh, as sets with names that kind of make sense. And these names match the entries in this uh, CSV file. So if it starts with MM, uh, 8 mm top, then uh, the system will know that it's uh, for 8 millimeter tape, and uh, we've got 85 millimeters of length to put parts in there. Now I added this entry here, the 8mm extra, it's also 8 millimeters. I'm printing it up as 160 millimeters, but uh, I, I put 150 here because I want a little bit of play. So here we go into open PNP. The job is currently all uh, unconfigured. And so what we're going to do is start out with uh, the auto setup script. So I just go to project auto feed setup. Now it's asking me for the part CSV that is this file here. And what I did is uh, to simplify things and make sure the script works nicely, I basically resorted all the entries by uh, this column here, which is the quantity. So the thing that has most parts uh, gets dealt with first. That's way we're sure. Uh, I'm going to tell it that, and I'm going to tell it, yeah, let's push it to the limit. I want to do 25 boards. So that way, ideally, I won't have to refill the feeders at all. So, okay, let's go. Now apparently uh, it's mapped it to a total of 73 feeds. I'm going to apply the changes. Boom. And here we go. Bam. So there. Our project now has a bunch of parts. A couple are still missing. Uh, these are basically because I didn't set up the package in one of those CSV files. But whatever. Let's take a look at the feeders. And here we are. Now if you look, uh, the extra has a bunch of 100 N caps. So the uh, 0.1 U caps are all in this guy and it takes six of them uh, to get everything we need but uh, there you go. So it prioritized uh, the components with the uh, greatest quantity per board uh, and greatest total quantity, stuck those into MM8 extra and then it filled the other ones uh, as appropriate. Uh, you've got a 12 millimeter feeder set here. You've got uh, all these other, my, my classic uh, right, left, top, whatever. So uh, what does this actually look like? Well, uh, we, can, we can check this out like this, but it's not all that clear. So uh, let's use one of the other scripts I've got here uh, to generate a map of this stuff. So let's call it these and let's export it here. And, okay, we're done. So Firefox, where did you go? All right, here's the SVG file. And you can see that everything is set up so that the 0603s are here, the extra as well. It's stepping on the, the right side feeder because uh, uh, they've never been to, uh, configured together in the same project. So let's move this out of the way a little bit just to see. I'm going to move right uh, down just for now. So uh, yet again, let's use one of the scripts we can use feeders translate set. So we're going to move the right set down. 8mm right and x displacement nothing and y displacement. Let's call it plus 100. Okay. All right, that should be done. Let's uh, re let's regenerate that map and here we go. Let's refresh this. See what happened. Ah, oh, there we go. Easier to see. Maybe 100 mil wasn't quite enough. Going to do that again. Oops, do that again. Move it another 100 up. I'll just translate it down later. Uh, the script makes that really easy, so it doesn't really matter. And let's have a look. All right, there we go. So we've got this one, which is kind of a mix up of a bunch of different things, all 8 millimeter, of course, but uh, you know, uh, 12 tens and 0603s and whatever was left over. The 12 millimeters are up here, and so is the eight millimeter top stepping on each other's toes as well, but whatever. On the left here, let's see. We've got 0603s, 
all together. Pretty sweet. And in the extra, we've got all those 100 ends. We've got some 10Ks, 100K. Okay, okay. And they're all 0402. So frankly, uh, I find that script really useful. It has changed my life. By the way, all of this is downloadable, so I'm going to put some links down uh, wherever you saw this video and uh, you'll be able to do the same thing. Cool, that handles pretty much everything we need until I actually get those physical feed sets, at which point we're going to set it all up. Okay, the feeds are all set up in OpenPNP and the feed set is being 3D printed. Hooray. Now I could get started setting up the surface with the uh, feed sets I have on hand, but this is the first time I actually have these PCBs this iteration. So before I go and commit 7,000 components to these boards, or even just expose everything on the pig in place, it would be prudent to check out that they actually work and that we're ready to go. So I'm going to do a couple of them manual style. So let's do that now while we wait for the 3D print. Now there are a few reasons to do this manual assembly, uh, other than just verifying that the boards do what we want them to do. First off, it gives me the chance to check that all the components are present and accounted for. Uh, also that the footprints match uh, what we have on the board here. Uh, so what we're going to need are a couple of things. Uh, there's a little program called Meatbag PNP, which I've talked about before uh, by Colin O'Flynn. I really like it. I use it every time I have to do a manual assembly. So for that, we're going to need a couple of things. Uh, first off is a footprint uh, position file. It's just this, export a CSV and you're done. The second thing would be a render of uh, the board itself. You can just take a screenshot of the board. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's kind of noisy here, so I'd get rid of the traces, but uh, that's fine. I like the 3D because, uh, well, it's pretty. And it looks like what I'm actually looking at. And then with those two files in hand, you can start the meatbag PNP thing. So when you launch that, uh, what you get is uh, two little windows. One is the image that you uh, provided, and the second is this screen with basically all your parts. Now you go through each one and it'll tell you where it is. Uh, you can increase the size of the dot there if you like. Um, one neat thing that I like to do is go, okay, okay, I'm doing this, uh, this 100 nanofarad cap. Well, show me where they all are. Okay, there we go. So let's grow that dot. <laughs> Oops. And you just go through one by one and you're done. So let's do that. Okay, that was pretty tedious, but uh, well worth it. Fresh out of the oven. They're looking pretty good. Visual and electrical inspection showed that all was well there. So let's get back to feeders. Okay, testing went well, and since there are two circuits in the system to fully validate, I also manually assembled a set of these, which handle power and sensing. Now that I have a couple of pairs and know that everything will work together, assembly can begin. Now, while that was happening, Federico of CappaPrint made these appear. He did a bang up job, so much so that uh, I may reduce tolerances a bit on future sets. I told him I needed something on which both black and white would pop, and that wouldn't be too reflective. So he suggested this shade of matte green. Now I'd set a 0.7 millimeter groove for components, which turns out great because it handles SOC 23s just as easily as resistors and caps. So we can get back to focusing on feeds. I made some tweaks to values during testing, and that means remapping the parts. But because all this is scripted, it means almost zero cost, and I had the auto setup script just figure it all out. Now rubber hits the road and we give these new feed sets a spin. So let's have a look at that process. First thing I do is a basic setup of the table with empty feed sets as a sanity check. Next, I replicate the layout somewhere comfortable and pre-sort all the components. I want to make certain I've got all my parts and make the feeder filling and refilling easy so I'll mark up all the packaging nice and big. I give myself a template for the feeder positions and then just follow the CSV exported by yet another of these PNP scripts. I also indicate component values on masking tape associated with each feed set, which comes in handy when double checking and refilling. All right, check it out. This is how the table ends up after the auto setup and me putting everything into place. It's not too bad, but I made a mistake with those caps. They're actually in 12 millimeter tape. And so what happens is that this guy ends up completely empty. Ah. So uh, this guy, top two is super packed and he's far away and this space is all free. So what I'd like to do, of course, is take this and bring it over here. Cool. Two problems with that. The first is if I just move top two, then top two is going to be way down there and my configuration just won't make sense anymore. The other thing, and this is kind of worse, is that this guy is designed to move this way. So if you put him on the left, well, suddenly the 1Ks here that are in position one, well, they're at the bottom, which is position 16 in my system. So I would like to both move this and flip it. 
So once again, code to the rescue. I took the opportunity to make PsyPNP just that much better, and we're gonna to move to the computer, see what we can do with the magic of code. Okay, this is the table as it is currently configured. You see all my stuff up here. The one Ks are in position one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah. cool. They're all too far away. I wanna move them down here. I wanna swap these guys. I've enhanced PNP to include a script called feeder migrate here, and it allows you to move part associations from one feed to another. So I wanna move from top two into left. Let's do it. Okay, swap 16, that sounds good. Now if we look at the feeders here, left now has stuff in it. Let's take a look at the table. Cool, the 22s are now up here and all my stuff is here. However, they're still not flipped. So we can tell the difference, boof, versus this, versus this, versus this. But it's upside down. The 1Ks, if I put it in the correct orientation for feeding this way, are actually all on the bottom. So I need to flip this around. To do that, we have another script. So here we see the 1Ks in position one and da da da. Let's use the script. I called it feed set flip parts. I want to do it in left here. And now he tells me they're flipped. So let's refresh this. Magic, magic. Let's have a look. So from auto setup to migrated and then to flipped. Perfect, now I can just take that little piece of plastic and put it in the right spot and everything will work out wonderfully. All right, it's time to get real and unravel these tapes. <laughs> So the protocol is go for the big components that don't care about jiggling first, go for the far components first, and uh, try to leave the tape on. The idea is to unwrap enough for the whole batch. Uh, just leave the tape there if possible, if it's not too annoying. If it is, it gets the scissors. Otherwise, we just do them one at a time. Go, 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 and then do the final auto setup. Let's do it. <laughs> For the most part, unmasking the components is a pretty obvious process, and it's pretty easy with anything 0603 or bigger. It does get a little tricky with small components like 0402, and black plastic tape is particularly finicky and bouncy. Start by aligning the holes, and then unmask parts slowly while holding everything down at all times. Fat fingers have a tendency to pick up little parts, so be careful. I mostly go for unwrapping only what I'll need for the current run or two. For first time setups, I'll usually run through with a single board to make sure everything is good. And once that's verified, go with bigger batches. Here I started with seven at a time. That's a whole lot of caps. Even with the pick in place, it takes a fair amount of time to get batches done. Though I eventually took the time to tweak the settings and got the light placer running a lot faster, as we'll see shortly. The run went well, but I still wound up with too much bounce in one of my feeds, leading to this. And had to intervene. For the most part though, it was all good and I got the boards done. The first set is finished. The feeder sets performed nicely, but in some cases there was more wiggle room than I'd prefer, like with this tape. If you wind up with a little too much space from the 3D print, I did find a little workaround. So the idea here is just to take your tape, which would be relatively bouncy, and double it up. So if you do that, just bring it down here, like so, line up one of the holes, and then the other one just fits right in. Boop! There we go. And now, it's rock solid. Rock solid. Nice. Now it's always better if you avoid too much bounce, namely by calibrating the height correctly. But the fact is, even most 0402s can handle a good deal without issue. Just be careful with small LEDs and stuff in black tape in general. Some of it's forgiving, but sometimes not so much. No, my beautiful accelerometers. Anyway, it all worked out, and that's how I create, set up, and use feeder sets with OpenPNP. You can find links to download everything demonstrated here to get your own boards produced. Have fun. Thanks for watching.